Hello, this is the second introductory tutorial to Idrisi. Uh, the assumption is that you've watched the first screencast, so you know how to and have already set up your data path at this point. And once we set up our data path, which remember is the main working folder in resource folders, we can actually begin to do some work. The most basic function of Idrisi is of course just to bring up an image to view. And to do that, we need to click on this icon that looks a little bit like a map of the world called display. Now, the display function gives us three options. We can either select raster data, vector data, or what we, we call a map composition file, which is a combination of different map elements, uh, which we can then create later on uh, if we wish to. But I'm going to start off with just a raster layer, something very basic. And because I've set up my resource folder, which is this location here. It gives me a list of all the raster files. And I'm just going to select arbitrarily an NDVI image. NDVI is Normalized Difference Vegetation Index image, which is a proxy for vegetation cover. And there's one here called Sierra NDVI. Now at this point, I could just click on OK and the image would pop up. But you'll notice on the right hand side, there are a number of what we call palette files. And these allow us to actually project a particular color scheme on the image that we're looking at. By default, the standard Idrisi palette is what we call the quantitative palette, which is 256 different colors. But it may not be appropriate for the sort of data we're looking at. Now, it just so happens that amongst the built-in list of palette files, you'll notice here there's one called NDVI, Green Vegetation Index Palette. So I'm going to select that because it seems to be the most appropriate for an NDVI image. So once I've done that, I can click on OK. And there is my image, my NDVI image. And you'll notice that on the right hand side of the screen pops up this other window called Composer. And Composer always pops up when you're working with an image that you can view. And it gives you a list of functions that you can access quite easily on the right hand side. Uh, You'll notice that it gives a title, and the title is embedded in the metadata as part of the file structure. And there's the actual image itself. And then on the right-hand side, by default, it always gives you the legend, which is based on the palette file. So the different colors here are built into that palette file that I chose. Had I chosen a different palette file, there may be a different color ramp here. But it's the numbers that are important. And this is essentially trying to replicate uh, what you would expect from an NDVI image because the very low values where there's very little vegetation is shown as brown which could be soil and where you've got a little bit of vegetation which could be grasses it shows as yellow and then for the very high NDVI values where there's a lot of vegetation it shows that as green which is why I chose this palette file it's the one that's most appropriate to the sort of data that we're going to be using. Now at this point I could add further layers and I can add either another raster layer or a vector layer and select it from the list here. But I'm not going to just now. You can remove layers also, add and remove them from here. But one very useful function is what's called layer properties. And when you've got a, a layer up and visible, you click on layer properties and it tells you something about the characteristics of that particular image that you currently selected. So it gives you the name, type, uh, the data type, how the information is actually stored in the file, the units, so it's in meters, the x and y coordinates of the corners, the number of rows and columns, and the minimum and maximum values, all that kind of thing. Uh, you also can just click on a histogram button and it'll give you a histogram frequency count of all the different pixels in the image. Um, you can change anything here you like, so you could change this uh, title and uh, you could then click on um, apply and save changes and it will do that for you. There's also another function here called map properties and map properties allows you to add additional map elements so you could for example have a north orientation arrow so you just click on visible to make that visible. You could have a scale bar so again to see that you just click visible because by default it's not visible and then you could have a text inset uh, where you have to nominate uh, an actual text file name 
which has the text in it that you want to display already uh, on your hard drive or somewhere in your uh, nominated resource folder list and then it'll make that visible. But I've just selected the scale bar, made it visible, and the north orientation arrow made that visible. So if I click on OK, there you see these two different scale bars have popped up. Now by default, Adresi just dumps them any old place, which is a bit annoying. So in order to make it look a bit nicer, we can actually double click and we can drag it over to one side of the map or the other. So we can drag these down to the bottom right. Now again, by default, it often puts units uh, for the actual scale bar. So you can change that if you go back to map properties and you go to scale bar. Uh, you can actually change the, the unit's text and we know that it's in meters. So I'm going to type in meters and then click on OK and you see it's updated it now. It says meters rather than units. And you have to remember to do that because having a scale bar with units is essentially of no use whatsoever. Now once we've actually got a map like this the way we like it, and so we may want to put this in another document, in a Word document for example, or to put it on a web page, we can save it. And so we can click on Save Composition and it'll save this particular area here, not the whole screen, but just the area, just the image within this small image window. It'll save it to the clipboard, uh, to a bitmap file, or in fact you can generate a new Idrisi image from it as well. So there are a number of different ways that you can actually save information in order to put it into a Word document or onto a web page somewhere else. All you have to do is give it an output file name. Of course you might say, well where on earth is it going to put it? Well if you recall, it'll put it in your temp, in this instance, the temp directory in your main working folder. That's where it puts all of the outputs. If you want to print it, then obviously you go to print composition. When you click on print composition, uh, it'll come up with another dialog in a moment and you can select the printer and the paper type and all that kind of business and go ahead and print that for you.